Good morning, fellas. It's all Raptor Jesus back with another episode of the workshop. And we're finishing up my, uh, setting up my lakes on my world anvil map. So I hope you fellas have been following along. Otherwise, you might be a little bit confused. <laughs> but just a little bit of a recap. First, we, uh, crafted this, uh, outdoor survival map using worldographer and once we got the terrain set up and all of the town set up I realized I'm totally messed up and I needed to do it a completely different format <laughs> so I just uh, deleted all the stuff I worked on in worldographer and uh, saved a new map uh, to upload to world anvil I think this one looks better I realized I, I didn't have the, the color code I wanted. Old Skull Lake. Not sure what to write about this one yet. I have to think about it for a little bit. Because if you remember in Zero E, a lot of the all these lakes have uh, forts essentially, or castles. But I'm calling them forts for the sake of the Western. So Skull Lake, I'm not sure what kind of fort will be at Skull Lake. Perhaps it'll be like a prison camp or something. I'm not sure yet. Hope you fellows have been enjoying this series of how to make a western campaign. Uh, and if you do, I think you should like and subscribe and hit that notification bell because it really helps me in the out and algorithm. And also keeps you up to date and notified. You know, YouTube's kind of wonky with that. They like to play little tricks on the subscribers to see if you're interested. Which ultimately just hurts the YouTuber, I think. But whatever I ain't a multi-billion dollar corporation what do I know <laughs> I'm just a simple man with a computer and a funny accent I'll have to avoid the, the last watering hole descriptions because I just want to say that with everything <laughs> Which it is important to note that all of these are, are fresh, clean watering spots, so I'm sure communities and such would start forming around them, which is, of course, why the army wants to take them all for themselves for forts. It just makes sense having a nice supply of water when you're out there in the frontier. There's probably really good fishing in them, too. That's why I didn't bother really to set up any sort of fishing icons. Yeah, I figure this one is a, a lake caused by an old meteorite impact. I think that would be a really interesting kind of historical point or, I don't know, just something cool that the locals could create stories of. Probably finish out the lakes in this episode. I'm not sure yet. I messed up. <laughs> Mistakes will happen. It's just the nature of life. I wanted this lake to have a little bit of a weird inland area. It's actually pretty handy making the lakes this way. It's easy to 
basically draw using the polygon cinch, which I think is actually a, a pain member benefit, so I'm sorry if you can't do this quite yet, fellas. That's not too big of a deal, though. There's other ways you can link articles for your players. You can actually just put out text and link an article to that. So it doesn't totally mess over the free user. It's actually pretty handy once you... It's intimidating, actually, to work on World Anvil at first. I think. You don't know what the hell to do. Right? You don't know how you're supposed to do everything, but just follow them. There's a pretty handy guides and instructions. They also have really useful YouTube tutorials. And that's how I learned initially a lot of this stuff. And they have a pretty active Discord, actually. Uh, they're really friendly. The the couple that, that... I think it's just a couple that makes World Anvil, but they're really nice people, and they're always willing to help you out. So, you know, sometimes you, I get a little bit intimidated trying to ask for help on people's Discords. You never know. You know, the kind of weirdos they're dealing with, and I don't want to offend them by saying, oh, your shit's broken. <laughs> so usually a lot of it is just user error, or you're not knowing how to, the tool kind of works. And if the creators aren't able to help you, there's just a great community that are, is totally willing to guide you through the process. My only gripe with World Anvil is you can't save any of this stuff offline. So, you know, if World Anvil falls as a company, I'm going to lose all this great stuff I wrote, which will be very unfortunate. But I wouldn't ima I can't imagine how you would be able to save all this stuff offline. It would be a big endeavor. I don't know that much about computer programming, to be honest, so I can just imagine it's a pain. <laughs> Get a little sliver of a lake. Hmm, what should I call this one? That kind of looks like a ladle, right? And sit here and think about what to type out. I almost forgot to make my my article. <laughs> I think I might be done with all of the lakes. Kind of look them over and see what I missed. I think there is one right here double check my little map printout I have. I'm trying to be as accurate as possible with uh, what they look like. This lake is loud. <laughs> Probably has lots of rapids and such. I haven't really plowed it out the right, range. I guess yet, that's fellas. the rest of the video, fellas. If you have any questions, please comment down below. I hope you like my video. If you want to see more of this stuff, please uh, subscribe. I hope you guys uh, have a good game next time you play and keep your shield arm strong, alright?